Hey everybody, Chris Lamb here. It's the month of December. First and foremost, Merry Christmas. I hope you and your family are doing well. We're gonna jump right into our market update. There's a lot to cover. The first thing we're gonna talk about is some of the trends we're seeing here in Shasta County, as well as some nationwide trends, as we do have a lot of clients now that are out of state. Uh, we started lending out of state a couple years ago, so we're gonna jump in. The first thing we're gonna talk about is pending home sales. Now, if any of you have been paying attention at all, most of you know that the real estate market has cooled off due to the raise in mortgage rates. Rates have gone up uh, two times, double at least since the beginning of the year. And in the month of November, uh, here in Shasta County, we saw about a 47% decline of homes that sold from what we saw just the month previous. And so it's a pretty interesting time in that there's there's sort of this gridlock happening in housing right now where you have people that want to buy homes. Uh, they're not super excited about rates where they're at, but you also have sellers who are wanting to sell, but they're keeping their home off the market because they obviously have low interest rates and they're not loving the types of properties that they're seeing that they could use to replace their home. But more than that, when it comes to looking at moving from their two or 3% mortgage to a 6% mortgage, a lot of people are making the decision that, hey, uh, I think we can stay here a while. And so going forward, you know, a lot of people might be surprised with what happens when we head into 2023. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about new construction. Now, I've talked about this many times before, but when it comes to our housing market, there's two fundamental drivers. We've got supply and we've got demand. You know, when we look at 2007, which is uh, arguably the, the peak in the housing market, right before the Great Recession, right before the greatest housing crash that most of us have ever seen. You know, we had 4 million homes for sale nationwide. Today, we have 1 million homes for sale with 14 million more households. So the demand is there, but the, the homes simply aren't there for people to buy. And a lot of economists and people that have speculated on what's going to happen with this housing market have thought there would be some big crash. And the problem is, we just don't have enough sellers coming to the market and the new construction has really been lagging nationwide because of the cost to build a house and the fact that a lot of contractors have 2008 and 9 in their rearview mirror and the the risk of getting into a big development with uncertain times is something a lot of people just don't want to do and so we still see a really low supply of homes for sale for the buyers that are there that would go out and buy a home uh, so those are a couple of things that we want to see. The, the, the other thing we want to talk about is the rental market. Now, for people that need housing, and like I said, there's a lot more people today than there was in 07 that need to have a house to live in to raise their family. Their options are to buy a house or they could certainly rent a home. What we are seeing right now in the rental market is the rental market is starting to cool off. I talked to multiple property managers, a couple here in Shasta County and a few out of our area in states like Florida who manage thousands of properties who are all saying the same thing. They're seeing more homes coming available for rent and less applications, meaning less people that are looking for rental properties. And so they're having a very similar challenge where they're having to get aggressive and the landlords are having to bring their rents down to try to attract people to come in and rent their property. And so these are just some of the stats that we're seeing right now. Uh, we also want to talk a little bit about real estate in general when it comes to pricing. Now, one of the things a lot of people know about real estate is real estate is local, meaning that what's happening here in Shasta County isn't going to be the exact same thing that we're going to see in a place like Austin, Texas or Boise, Idaho or Miami, Florida. Every market is going to have some differences depending on employment, wages, and the amount of people that want to live there. And so here in Shasta County, what we're seeing right now is that a lot of sellers are very willing to cooperate with the buyers that are coming in uh, to the market because they know there's less of them. And if they want to sell their home, they're going to have to get aggressive and try to get ahead of this market. But we're also seeing a lot of people that are looking at the idea of selling. They would love to get a new house or maybe they would like to move across the country and be closer to family or in a place that they would like to retire. But if you remember, and many of you I'm sure do, just not long ago, mortgage rates were 2 and 3%. And this has really proven to be sort of a poison pill for our Federal Reserve, who is trying to combat inflation by bringing rates up and hopefully bringing demand down 
so that less people are out spending money and that inflation number can come down. One of the problems they have is they, there, were, there were so many people that had these super low interest rates that would usually come to the market and sell their homes and prices would come down because we would see increased supply, which would ideally slowly bring housing down. It's just not happening as fast as a lot of people expected. Now, I want to say that home prices have come down and definitely in some markets have come down more than others. But right now what we're seeing nationwide is that there is sort of this gridlock with people that want to buy homes and people that want to sell homes. And we're just not seeing uh, the type of market that a lot of people expected we might see. Uh, we all we, we want to talk about 2023. So, you know, everyone right now is thinking what's going to happen in 2023. There's a lot of talks about, is there going to be a recession? Are we going to see high numbers of unemployment? Is the Fed going to continue to raise rates to try to bring inflation down? Now, a couple things that are really important, and I think good news, the last two inflation readings that the Federal Reserve uses, one of them is called the CPI. The other one is their favorite reading called the PCE report. They came out showing that the inflation numbers are starting to cool when compared to a year over year basis. Now, the reason why those things are important is because this is saying that what the Fed has been doing is starting to work. And as it's, we start to see inflation come down, we're going to see some stability in mortgage rates. In fact, in the last month, we've seen mortgage, mortgage rates come down 1% in a very short period of time. Now I'm filming this video early December, and there's going to be another report coming out uh, mid December It's called the CPI report right before the fed is going to make a decision what they're going to do, whether they're going to raise rates again or not. If that report comes in lower, there's many experts that predict that we will see mortgage rates come down even lower. And a lot of the experts I follow are saying that we will see a rate somewhere around five to five and a half percent, maybe lower at some point early next year. Now, this is really important for people to think about if they're thinking about buying a house in the next year. Once we see that prices have dropped a little, which they have, and they might even drop more from here. And then we see mortgage rates come down to a more affordable place. There's going to be a rush of people trying to get back into the market and it's going to get very busy again. So a lot of people right now are trying to time the market and wait for the crash and find the best time to buy. And I hope that you guys have heard enough. I know that I've been taught this for years. No one can predict anything at this point, but if we do see rates come down, it is going to be good news for people that want to purchase a home. Uh, the last thing we want to talk about right now is should you buy a house or not? Now, this question is the, the same answer, no matter what's going on in the market. Uh, it's important that people understand that when you're looking at making any investment, whether it's a real estate investment, a stock, a uh, mutual fund, it's about time in, not timing. Timing the market is a wonderful thing. If someone can buy a house at the bottom and the price goes up from there, gosh, I hope that happens for everybody. Certainly, I hope that happens for me. But in reality, in the last 21 years, there's only been two years where real estate prices have not gone up and appreciated. And certainly, if someone's making a purchase today, it makes sense for them. It's a house they want. They can afford the payment. Um, especially if they're selling a house and rolling that equity into the next house. If you hold property for five to 10 years because of what's going on with inventory and construction and the demand for housing that will continue to rise as millennials come of age and there's more families that need housing in a country where we already know we're desperately short on inventory, home values will continue to go up. And that's just a fact. And so hopefully this was helpful for you. I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting us this year. We, we're so grateful uh, to be in a great community like Reading and to have clients now all over the country who continue to send their family to us and reach out to us anytime they're making a move. If there's anything I can do for you, please reach out to me. Have a great Christmas and a happy new year.